Can you all hear me? No! Yes! No need to shout. If you have habits of care, you're sitting around the amphitheater, sitting in our local truth to this play. The one with the crescent in the back goes side to side. Now the rubber injuries are moving out and we will describe their kit to you. Take a closer, closer look at the equipment of the injury soldiers. You can, you can see they wear large helmets, helmets to protect their heads. Large cheek pieces, cheek pieces either side the faces, either side, either side the face. Big, big neck guards at the back of the helmet. The reinforcement on the front to take sword blows might come down on the front of the helmet. So we're wearing a type of armor. Most of them are wearing, wearing a type of armor. armor. Which, which is, is uh, we call Arca Segmentata, made of segments of metal which are riveted together on leather straps. straps. This makes the armor quite flexible and quite, quite easy for the soldier to move inside. inside. For many, for many years, years uh, we got, when, when I say, I say we, I mean, the, the academics did not understand how this armor worked. worked. But two, two and a half suits, suits of this armor were found at the Roman supply station on Hadrian's Wall. And from that time, we've been able to reconstruct. Uh, uh, this, this type, type of armor, armor accurately. The weight, the weight of one of these armors, armors is about uh, uh, 10, 10 kilos in weight. weight. Around, Around the bottom plates of the armor, armor you've got a military belt, belt a leather, leather belt, belt with decorative metal, metal plates riveted to it. To it. In, the in the front, front of the belt, you get this uh, peculiar apron, which may, may be for the protection of the lower stomach and private parts. Though we find this more psychological than practical. On the, on the feet, feet we've got very tough, tough leather sandals, sandals very, very thick, thick soles in the sandals. Some, some of them have got more of a boot type uh, foot 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 wear, but most of them have got, got this type of very heavy sandal, heavy sandal with a thick sole with, with numerous hobnails in the bottoms of the sandals. sandals. These to protect the leather and stop the leather being worn away. Also gives us a good grip on surfaces such as we are on today. The legion he carried on his left hand, in his left hand, a large shield, shield called a scutum, which is made, made of laminated wood. wood. And today we refer to laminated wood as plywood. So you have thin layers of wood with the grain going in different, different directions. directions. This, this makes very strong construction, and also, and also because it's glued in a curved shape, it stays in that shape. The shield is then covered in linen or leather, and the design painted directly onto the front of the shield. And from, and from the, the second, second Tacitus's is writing, he suggests that um, because, because two legions were able to approach, approach an enemy legion carrying by picking, picking up their shields, shields it suggests that each legion had a design uh, which, which was, was peculiar to each, to each legion. legion. In the center, the center of the shield is a large metal boss which protects the single hand, hand grip that they used to carry and maneuver, and maneuver in the shield. shield. Well, the Roman usually was well equipped with weapons. First of all, he has a javelin. The javelin is a throwing weapon, so this is a shock weapon. Imagine if you engage the Roman army in battle, you would get volleys of these javelins thrown at you. This was then followed by 
The short swords, the soldiers draw their short swords, short swords, the short swords, short swords, short swords short stabbing and thrusting swords. swords. And they would use their shields, shields to knock you in the face, face knock you off balance, and stick, stick you particularly into the stomach with the short sword. And finally on the left side, another uh, killing, killing weapon, weapon from, from its shaping can only be a stabbing weapon. It's called, it's called a pure pure dagger. dagger. And, and each uh, legion can carry one, one of these. Just, Just to confuse everybody, everybody today, legions were organized in centuries, centuries of 80, 80 men. To so 80, 80 men in a century, century not 100. 100. We also, we also have a group of leaders here who have got marching packs on their, their shoulders. Leather, the shield gear covers, as you see, leather with leather shield covers. They've got packs on their shoulders, just like our soldiers when they go to Afghanistan today, take their big um, uh, packs with their bits and pieces they're going to need on campaign, so the Roman soldier would expect to carry his uh, equipment with him. He's got three days' supply of food, he's got a blanket, a blanket, he's, he's got, got a cloak, he's got, got spare sandals, sandals uh, all, all the bits and pieces, pieces that you would need on, on the march. march. And they, they were expected to march some 20 miles in five, five hours, which is quite a, a fast, fast march. march. Okay. The, the gentlemen, gentlemen in front of you now, now with the oval shields, shields are Roman auxiliary soldiers. soldiers. There were um, as, as many Roman auxiliary soldiers in the Roman army as there were legionaries. These are non-Roman citizen soldiers who recruited for a period of 25 years, and at the end of their 25 years would receive Roman citizenship, which was also passed to their families as well. It's the Roman auxiliaries you would find in the smaller forts in the valleys in Wales, and indeed the Roman auxiliaries who manned Hadrian's Wall. Their equipment tends to be more simple than the legionaries, they are on less pay, uh, simple, simple brass helmets, helmets. In, in this case, case got, got male shirts, for some reason or other you never see them in the strip armor, armor. and they've, and they've got, got double belts belt supporting their swords and daggers. They've, they've also got, got a flat oval, oval shield, shield more to, suitable more maybe for skirmishing, and a, and a stabbing spear rather than, than a throwing, throwing javelin. javelin. They were organized as well into centuries of 80 men, but also into smaller uh, regiments, regiments of about 500 or 800 men. men. We've also got various officers attached to the contingent. First of all, they have a signet for all standard bearer. He carries the standard to show the men uh, their own standard to follow, just like a flag is used around the rallying point in the British Army uh, some 150 years ago. So this, so this standard would act as a rallying point to show the 80 men of the, of the century attacked to him uh, where to come together in battle. You can see, see all the musicians and standard bearers wear animal skins over their helmets. In this, this gentleman's case, it's a, a European brown bear he wears over the top of his helmet. He's followed by a horn player called a corner ken, who carries this large circular horn called a cornu. This, this is used, used to lay commands in battle and on the march. <laughs> this this cornu is based on several that were found in uh, Pompeii and now in the Museum of Naples in Italy. Um, um, and would have been used not only for, uh, on, on the march, but also in the Roman amphitheatre and the Roman games, and indeed at uh, Roman religious ceremonies. You can, you can see, see he's got a wolf skin over the top of his helmet. Next, Next gentleman carries a flag. This, this flag shows you which region the men have come from. And, and as is appropriate to where we are today, the base of the Second Legion, so he's carrying the flag of Second Legion Augusta. And this legion was based here carrying on for many, many years. And once again, he's got a European brown bear over his helmet. European brown bears can go from anything from black to a very light brown. We've also, also got, got a chap here, here carrying the face of the emperor, emperor called an Imago, because he carries an image. And, and in, in this, this case, the emperor, emperor on this image is the emperor of Vespasian. 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 So called because he was chosen by the centurion, it was therefore the centurion's option to choose him. 
It is, is if you like, a sanctuary in waiting. waiting. His main, main badges, badges are ranked if we have evidence for the staff that he carries, and also the, the, the silver, silver ring, ring on his right hand. hand. Also, also we've given him a large crest and feathers to make him to pick him out. And also he carries the orders of the day in a satchel. The equipment that I'm wearing is that of a Roman centurion of this time. You can, you can always tell the centurion because he's the only one whose crest goes from side to side, the transverse crest on the helmet. The crest you are on view today are mainly made of horsehair. Though you can see some feathers are on the sides of some of the other ranks' helmets. Other badges are ranked for the centurion of the greaves that he wears on his legs. Really not to protect his legs but to show he's an officer of some importance. I also have a cloak on my left shoulder. And also, also I've got medals, medals on my chest, chest for cavalry, which are awarded for bravery in battle. And these, and these could, could be awarded in sets, sets of five, seven, seven or nine. And also, also the torques on the shoulders, these are also given to Roman soldiers as military awards. And finally, and finally I would always carry a fine staff, which is part of my burden of office, but would also be used on the men for what we call casual corporal punishment. In fact, in fact, there was a centurion on the Rhine who was nicknamed Kido Ultram, which means fetch me another, and he was always breaking his vine sticks on the backs of the legionary soldiers. We have looked at infantry, infantry so far, but we're lucky today to have two cavalrymen with us. We'll get them into the arena now. <laughs> Now, Roman horses, horses, horses were very, very large compared, compared with horses we use today. We would have to be physically quite uh, small mounts. And here they come. come. Go on, let me run around with a horse. Let's not make it half hearted. So you can see some of the horses have. Uh, Why is it everybody goes for horses? <laughs> you can see the riders are equipped with male shirts. They've got helmets to protect their heads. Very decorative helmets with uh, sort of uh, the image of human hair being into to them. They have shields on the left side. They have a stabbing spear. They also have a long slashing sword. The ponies or horses themselves have, as you can see, decorative saddle cloths. Uh, with decorative pendants hanging front and back of the horse. But the most uh, noticeable thing you'll see on the uh, Roman cavalrymen is the fact they're riding with no stirrups. Now, this thought for a very long time that the Roman cavalry could be very effective because they rode with no stirrups. But then it was realised when a uh, gentleman called Peter Connolly reconstructed the Roman saddles, it was realised that these saddles with a horn in each corner Keep the man, keep the man firmly seated upon the horse. It means that he can fight, stab, and be as effective as a man with uh, using stirrups. And then later on, you'll see see this in action. Two different sections of the men are operating on different types of exercise. You can see some with wooden swords and basket shaped seals. Uh, these wooden swords would in fact be weighted with lead to make them twice the weight of a normal fighting sword. Another group are practicing throwing healer. Another group are being drilled. As we said earlier, all the orders are given in Latin. Sin dex, sin dex, sinister dexter, left right. I told you! A couple of auxiliaries are sparring with the wood dealer.
We're always exercising, make them look at it, and also keep them out of, uh, out of trouble with their idle hands. One of the Roman writers says there, drills were bloody battles, and their battles were bloody drills. The Roman army was the first army to actually march in step. The old cavalry are coming on to demonstrate some exercises. Not only were you training the cavalry man, you were also training the cavalry horses. Horses usually uh, expect to see a stationary target and it will shy if the target moves. But these horses have got to be trained to actually go for men. I'm going to demonstrate the stabbing pastor. You see how the horns of the saddle remain nice and firm in the saddle. Stirrups weren't necessary. Probably this first horse is about the size of a traditional Roman pony. It wouldn't have been much bigger than that. from Malta yesterday just to ride here this weekend. Going back on Monday, never turn. When we were exercising their sword craft with human heads. We couldn't get any human heads this afternoon, so we're using cabbages. Horses used to operating against human targets. 
Everyone in the guard clamours to be a human child. I think these two upset the centurion last night. Crafty. See how difficult it is to make a horse charge a moving target like a man. They have to be trained to do it. Yeah, come on, give us some encouragement. This is all easy. Come on. Who are you rooting for? The horse or the soldiers? Then in our reassembling, we'll show you some uh, drill and battle tactics. Standards out of the way. Are the battle rope for the famous test or top? Can you see any Make a shell all around the This is used for approaching towns and fortifications. And once they, they reach, they, they could just, just immediately drop the shield, stand out, and then attack. 
You'll see the auxiliary taking up on either side to protect the tortoise. Okay. 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 Well done. Well done. Give, give them a clap. It's very hot out there today. Do you know where to go on top? That's right. And then people can buy it for two calories. Moving out into battle line, with their swords. swords. You see, you see the sword are now held, held up in the battle position, position facing forward to waist height, height and, and the shield to be lifted up to the battle position. The whole of the man's body is covered, and each shield helps protect the man next to him. I just don't like Can you remain to keep that line? Very, very difficult. You want to line out, especially when you're carrying a shield. The person who spoke always in Latin. It does sound like Latin to me.
Well, there we go. Go off some Roman artillery. No, you're going to be moving about it. But a little bit. You did fire Roman artillery. Gunpowder hadn't been invented yet. You shoot it. The propulsion is provided by skeins of rope and torsion. Sometimes even hair was used, which is very good in torsion. It's a good elasticity. Can you see the gates? Three types of artillery weapon here. To the left of the arena, we have a ballista. This fires fairly small rocks, depending on the size of the ballista, so the size of the rock. So these, these are small rocks. Just being wound up now. We have two, two catapulters in the, the centre. Rather like a medieval crossbow, they fire bolts. Again, it's all in torsion. You can see if you look carefully that there's rope in torsion. On the right of the as you, As you can see, see it would be useful, useful for firing into cities. We, we also have, have some archers, archers using, using composite bows. Wow, they go, don't they? Oh, cool. Range of a catapult takes the range of about a quarter of a mile. <laughs> Those are the cheap seats. <laughs> <laughs> The places where you get caught with an arrow. The other girl on the right hand side with a single arm. arm. It's, it's quite, quite a small, small one. They, they could be very big. big. They, they can also, also be quite dangerous, dangerous to the operators. operators. We, we do know from history, history that an Onega crew was wiped out by its own Onega when it misfired. So we had to be very careful with these things. Yeah, they were very dangerous. They were very dangerous. When the Jews, Jews occupied the fortress of Masada, the Romans besieged them and fired large onagers at them. And of course the Jews could see the uh, lumps of rock coming, so they tended to put uh, straw mats over the side of the walls, which helped to cushion them. Uh, then, then the Romans decided they, they would paint the lumps of rock they were throwing blue. blue. Good, Good example of early camouflage, so they couldn't be seen. seen. As long as you don't get wiped out. Oh, well, they are dangerous for your friends, isn't it? Well, the bones are not. Is it um, melons? No, it's just a little bit of the melons. No, it's a little bit of 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 melons. No, it's a I understand, I understand we're, we're going to go for the ballista first. That's that's just shut up for a high, high shot as well. Ballista, ballista on the left. Now going for the catapulter, high trajectory. 
go to one in the middle. Let's see it. We haven't lost that one. They cost about twenty-five pounds to replace one Raj. Don't forget, forget we should, should be up on our cup. You can come, come to talk to us up there, there, have a look at the leather tents. tents. Horses, Horses out, shall, shall I say, ponies will be up there for ten, ten, ten minutes or so for your children, children can come and pat the pony, but remember a horse bites in one hand and kicks in the other, so do be careful. And ladies in particular, come up there and cross yourself a Roman soldier and examine his arm and equipment. This means right in Latin. My friend? And your friend, I think he was called the Dexter. Was that the police right, do you think? You don't know anyone called the police. Could you help me on the. Thank you very much, thank you. I want to see that. How are you being targeted, Bill? Surprise is something. 